Hey crafting friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial I'm going to show you something really cool which we did a project, I'll show you that too, um, a year and a half ago roughly where we did this painting using ink on canvas. Look how pretty those are. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be painting this. And I made this pillow, it's just a canvas pillow. I made it using this brand new stencil that I just got that I'm absolutely in love with. It says, bless our nest. And I am thinking that by the end of summer, this is gonna look horrible because I'm gonna use this for a ton of different projects. Anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. Uh, feel free to ask questions and at the end I'll get links for everyone who might want one. So this is what I did this morning about four hours ago. I took my stencil off the backing, laid it down on the pillow and I have multiple layers of um, paper towels inside of it because I didn't want it to bleed through to the back. And then I just used some black ink from MagnoliaDIY.com. The inks have the white lids. And with a squeegee, I just applied a coat. And look at the detail of the stencil. I mean, it's gorgeous just like this, but it's gonna be even prettier once uh, we start playing with it a little bit, okay? Um, so then I let it dry, and then I heat set it. And I want to talk to you about that for just a second before we jump in. Okay, so um, a pillow is something that could potentially get wet if somebody sat back on it with a, a moist or wet jacket. It also could potentially get something on your sofa and potentially you might want to wash it. So you have to use ink. You cannot use chalk paste for this kind of a project. No, 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 no. No chalk paste. The first time somebody sits back with a wet jacket, even if you spray it, um, they're going to get it on the back of their jacket and then probably all over your sofa. And if you need to wash it and you use chalk paste, it'll be all a big smeary mess. So for this kind of a project, you need to have ink and you need to heat set it, which is super easy. Okay, this is a piece of parchment paper. And my iron's not really on, but I would set it to cotton, no steam. I'm putting a piece of parchment paper over my design just to protect my iron. And for three or four minutes or longer, I'm just gonna keep moving my iron around. I'll pick it up occasionally to let it cool down. And what's happening in layman's terms is the ink is fusing into the fibers of your pillow. And it's permanent. So if you do this same thing with tea towels, you can use them, you can wash them, and you can dry them. And the ink will not be coming off. So, um, so that is how to heat set. You do need to wait until your project is completely dry to start heat setting it. Okay, so um, I showed you these. This is the inspiration. Um, these flowers I made on my Magnolia Design Company bag that I took to Pinner's Conference, not this year, but last year. And then I painted them. And same with this. And then I've been using this bag for my Bible study bag. Um, so this stencil is called Floral Fantasy, and it's a beautiful one, but we're gonna do um, Bless Our Nest today. All right, and I'm gonna be painting off of a glass plate, and we're gonna use a variety of different colors of ink, which is fun. So, I'm just going to take some blobs of ink, uh, let's see, let's start with some pink and some purple.
and this is called sangria. It's a beautiful color. And um, some of these flowers remind me of pennies. So, you know, I might not get the, the colors exactly right, but I'm going to do this according to my imagination of what color these flowers would be. All right, and then I want some green, and I'm going to use some of this, uh, oh, it's almost gone, this um, Magnolia Green ink. I think we'll start with that, and then I am also going to paint the bird. But, you guys, this project would probably take me, um, seriously, a couple of hours. So I'm just going to show you the basics, and then I will come back and do the whole thing, and then I will get pictures. Let me scoot those back just a little bit. Um, so I don't think anyone wants to sit for two hours and watch me paint. But I'm going to show you the basics of how it works. Okay, so I put some blobs on this glass plate, and then I'm just using my little magnolia spritzer thing. Um, this is distilled water in here, but you can use whatever kind of water you want for this project. And I'm just adding some water, and then I got out a variety of different brushes, and I'm going to mix up some green. And we'll just start. That's the hardest part, is to be brave to do the first strokes. And um, I'm going to do the leaves this color, and then I think I also have a darker green. So I may add some of that later. I didn't get it out this morning. Um, I do want to show you one thing here with the green. Okay, maybe you notice that the black ink detail is sort of covered up. Um, to fix that, I'm just going to blot off some of the green as I'm going along, and then you have that detail all back. Oh, and why did I heat set this before I started painting? Because I didn't want the black to be mixing in with every color, you know, um, so that's why. And I'm trying to decide what color we should do our little bird. Why don't you guys tell me in your, in your opinion, in the comments, what color should I paint our little bird? So you can see how easy this is. And um, when we get to a flower, in just a second, I'm going to show you how to blend, which is fun. So let's do that little blotting thing again. And that is going to pull off some of your ink that you're painting on, but you can just kind of go back and just add a little bit back in. But I want that detail of the black, so that is why I'm doing that. Okay, let's hop down to this big flower for a minute. And hang on just a second. I feel a sneeze coming on. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use a combination of these different pinks. And we're going to work on this flower. And let me think. I don't know if this is how it would be in nature or not, but I'm going to start with the darkest color in the center. Um, I may have that wrong. But this is my imagination of what a peony should look like. So I'm just going to paint some of it on in the center. Let's move on to a lighter color.
this really is so much fun. Uh, and after it's all finished and dry, I will heat set it and I could wash this pillow if I wanted to. Let's see, let's get a paintbrush and just get some water. If you dab your project with uh, just a brush that has some water on it, it will lift up some of the color to make it lighter. And I am wanting the center to be much darker, so. Continue. So what is everyone doing today? Um, who saw me do the pill, the um, bag a year, year and a half ago? And um, I also did some jeans, the cuff, and it was super cute. I used that floral fantasy stencil for that too. That was one of my favorite stencils last year. think maybe we should switch to purple just to have some variation. And you can pop in a little bit of orange or yellow, um, whatever suits your, like if you're making it for your decor or just whatever you want. I'm gonna look this up in just a second and you'll be able to see what I mean about the color um, getting lighter as we move out. So if you're just hopping on, um, when I'm finished here live, you might want to go back to the beginning and watch this video on replay so that you can get all the, um, just all the details of how this works. You, oops, you don't want to get it too, too wet because then um, when you blot it off, you lose all of your color. I want to do this, these leaves that are right next to it also. I think they're going to be really pretty. This is one of those projects that you could do at your kitchen table, kind of while you're watching a movie or something. Um, I don't know, I'm so impatient. Uh, I like my projects to be boom. I started and then I finished. <laughs> I don't like to have to wait a long time to see my results. So if I'm doing something else at the same time, that makes it not seem so long. Okay, I'll show you. Can you see how I have some different colors? And I think I will come back 
and add a little bit of orange to it um, when it's a little bit drier. Let's come back and work on some of these leaves that are right by it. This is what I'm painting off of. It's just a glass plate that I put, you know, some colors, some little blobs of ink down, and then I um, sprayed them with water and kind of mixed them up. darker green is possibly called peppermint leaf and I don't know if I have that. Um, So tell me in the comments um, if you have ever tried this technique of, of basically converting your ink. It's almost like it becomes a watercolor and then you just paint it over the top of the design um, and you want to have heat set the design before you do that. but. And I'm blotting just so that the black, which is the design underneath, will stand out. Isn't that pretty already? Let's play with let's play with a little bit of orange and see what that would do. So Magnolia has a whole bunch of really awesome colors of uh, different inks and um, yeah you can use them for regular stenciling uh, you can also use them for this kind of thing and basically all I'm doing is I put a blob on a plate on a glass plate and um, I added some water to it to dilute it a little bit I don't know if this is a flower that exists in nature. Probably not. Oops, that's really dark. I'm just putting a little bit of orange on the tips of these petals. We could go crazy and keep layering more and more and more if we wanted. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Patricia, you're so nice. 
She says she loves to watch me paint and mix my colors. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I um, am crafty, for sure, but I'm not super artistic. And um, I have no painting skills, really. I'm just the type of person that I want to do something, and I'm going to figure out how to do it, <laughs> by golly. Uh, and I'm going to keep trying until I do figure it out. So if you have actual, like, you're an artist, then you could do something just spectacular. I'm just doing, you know, my best with the God-given abilities that I have, which do not include being an artist. Okay, I think that looks better. Let's move on and do, let's do a little yellow in this flower right here. I need to find a spot on my plate where I can put some yellow and not have it get all mixed up with other colors. I'm going to do a little yellow and a little bit of pink and maybe some orange. Just sprayed it. You could just add some drops to it if you don't have a sprayer, but they are nice to have for sure. It's pretty bright. no idea what this flower is supposed to be or really what it should look like <laughs> but this is a gorgeous stencil and um, you could use the whole thing like I did here bless our nest with the bird and the wreath you could do just the wreath you could do just the bird or you could do just the bless our nest so you have a lot of options with this one I'm going to get a little bit of pink. It's off a little bit, so it's not so strong. When I did this other project, my bag, um, a lot of people told me that it kind of reminded them of a colored tattoo which I, I think it kind of does look like that. Um, although that's not what I was shooting for. It's blot. Oh, I took all my pink off. Dang. If you're going to do a project like this, you definitely need to have something protecting the back side of your project uh, while you're painting so that it doesn't have any chance of bleeding through 
to the back. decide which parts of this are petals and which parts are leaves. One of the hardest things for me is to decide when I'm done and to stop fiddling with it. Okay, I don't know if this looks like an actual flower or not, but it's got a combination of pink and yellow. Let's do a couple of leaves by it just so you can see. Just a little brush. Did I take all my green? I think I did. very yellow because it's mixing in with my yellow. I need to look to see if I can find my darker green. And then I'll just add some of that to it. Okay, I am almost getting there. I want to know what you guys think in terms of our bird. What color do you think that he should be? He or she. I don't know if it's a male or a female bird. Can you see how the painting of ink on the top of it is bringing it more to life? And the examples that I wanted to show at the beginning are these. I did more intense colors on this. And this is the green I'm talking about. I need to see if I can find that. Here's another example. You can keep layering and keep adding to it, and that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Let me show you. Um, this is what the um, floral fantasy look, stencil looks like. I got a new one. And that's what I use to create this and the bag. And then the um, Bless Our Nest looks like this. They're great stencils. Um, and then, of course, there's a bazillion, well, not a bazillion, but there's a lot of different colors, so you can choose what you think you would use. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you got your creative juices flowing and got some ideas about things that you can do. You may not have known that you can take an ink that you would stencil with, water it down and use it almost like a watercolor. And then when it's fully dry, you can heat set it with a hot iron and this will be, this could be washed. Uh, so 
that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to give you those ideas. Juanita, I will get you a link. These stencils are from magnoliadiy.com, but I'll get you a direct link so you don't have to go hunt it down. This pillow form is 18 by 18, and it comes in a package of two, uh, and they're nice. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. If you decide to do a project like this, I definitely want to see pictures. Um, so you can post pictures of your projects over at Dreamy DIY. Oh, no. Yeah. Dreamy DIY. That's the group that I set up for us. Um, if you haven't joined that yet, just type Dreamy space DIY in your search bar on Facebook. It should pull it up, answer the questions. Um, myself or my administrator will approve you, and then you can go in and look at the tons of beautiful pictures that are there. I mean, amazing. And you can share your pictures as well, because I feel like the more ideas you have, the better. You know, then you can take all this, all these different ideas and make it your own in your own style, your own colors. Okay, you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. And I'll see you tomorrow. But I will get pictures and I will be fiddling around with this probably all afternoon. Okay, see you guys.